Now, what if there are discrete particles, there are small, small point masses. So how do you find this? How do you find the angular momentum of all these about the central point that is about the origin. So what you have to do is draw all the position vectors. So let's say for the first one, it's R1, it's moving with V1, mass is M1, this is M2. So for each of the individual particles, there will be a value of angular momentum. For example, for this one, if I write L1 vector is going to be equal to, well, R1 vector times V1 vector, correct? So I can write this further as R1 vector times m1 times v1 vector, isn't it? Or I can write it as m1 times r1 cross v1. This will be for the first particle. Similarly, for the second particle, you can write what will be the value for second particle. L2 is going to be equal to m2 into r2 cross v2. And so on. You can just go on writing for each of the particles like that. And then the net angular momentum of the system of particles is going to be the vector summation of all individual angular momentums. That is L will be equal to L1 vector plus L2 vector and so on up to Ln. Vector. So you just have to have this vectorially added, isn't it? So once you do that, then you get the final value of the angular momentum vector for a system of particles like this. So this is just a simple normal formula. I don't want to go get into more details of it, right? So if there are discrete individual particles, then if you have to find the, the angular momentum about a particular axis or about a particular point, then what you should do is find the value of angular momentum for each of the individual particles, vectorially add all of them, and that would be the value of the net angular momentum for that particular system of particles. Now, what about a rigid body? How do you how do you calculate that for a rigid body? So, for example, if you take this rigid body, this rigid body is made up of so many small, small individual particles. And if it is rotating about a particular axis, just now how you have seen, now each particle is going to move in different, different circles, right? And it is going to move in different, different circles. So, how do I get to find the value of what angular momentum? So in case of rigid body, how you are going to find the value of angular momentum? Well, we know that angular momentum about, uh, well, any line, let's call this line as AB, about this line AB is going to be the vector sum of angular momentum of the first particle plus angular momentum of the second particle and so on, correct? Up to Ln. Now we also know, we also know that if I write angular momentum for L1, that is going to be equal to M1 times R vector cross V vector. I can write this. Now, since each of the individual particles are moving in a circle and for a circular motion, we know that there is a relation. What kind of a relation is there between the angular variables? We know that L, that is linear distance, is equal to R times of theta, correct? Then we have Velocity v is equal to r times of omega. And what about acceleration? Well, acceleration, sorry, linear acceleration is equal to r times of alpha. This is what we have. And we know for each of these cases, each of these values. So this could be v1, this could be r1, correct? Similarly, if I have to write l2 vector, that is going to be equal to m2. And this would be r2 vector cross, we'll have v2 vector. And so on. Isn't it, right? Now, you have to think about it. If you can replace this V with this value of R times omega, okay, because we are going to replace V, so we'll be using this equation. Now, what is special about this omega? The value of V1, V2, V3, that is the value of the linear velocity, could be different for each of the individual particles, all right? But when it comes to the value of angular velocity, the value of the angular velocity is going to be the same, okay? The value of the angular velocity is going to be the same. Why you say? Let us say that I have this stylus in my hand and I start rotating this. I rotate this, this stylus, okay? So each for each of the individual particles, the linear velocities will be different, okay? But the angular velocity, so if this point has gone up by an angle of 30 degrees, this point is also with the same angle. This point also subtends the same angle. So for all of them, the angle that is moved or that is that it is got displaced by is nothing but 30 degrees. So the angular displacement is 30 degrees. So it is all moving with the same angular displacement. 
and the time taken if you divide it with the time taken then you get the same value of angular velocity so if a body is moving like that then what we can say is the angular velocity for each of the individual particles is exactly the same exactly the same all right so i can write v is equal to r times omega correct now let us say that we have got l which is equal to m i'm just taking a general expression m times of r times v i am replacing with with r times of omega r omega and let's just talk about the magnitude now what do we get this is r and r so we get l is equal to m r square for one particular particle i am doing it right now times omega this is what you get m r square times omega now what is this m r square for one particle about a particular axis do you remember a formula do you remember a formula my dear friend yes this is nothing but moment of inertia this is nothing but moment of inertia so i can write l is equal to i times of omega all right now this is just for one single particle if you just go on adding and integrating it for different different particles you'll get well l1 plus l2 plus l3 plus l4 and so on and mass will all get common and you'll have r m1 r1 square plus m2 r2 square plus m3 r2 r3 square like that so but omega is going to remain the same right so the total value of m1 r1 square plus m2 r2 square plus m3 r3 square if you calculate it for all the particles you'll get the net moment of inertia of that rigid body times the value of omega is what is going to give you the total value of the angular momentum you got this correct all right so what i can say is l is equal to i omega now in vector form what i can say l vector is equal to i times of omega vector so what will be the direction of this angular momentum vector the direction of the angular momentum vector will be along the direction of the omega vector all right or the angular velocity vector okay i hope you understood this you have written it down properly okay now let's have an analogy like how we used to say that force is equal to mass times of acceleration we said that right so we got torque is equal to moment of inertia times angular acceleration similarly can i say linear momentum is equal to mass times of velocity in the same way can i say angular momentum is equal to instead of mass what was the analogy in rotational motion moment of inertia and instead of linear velocity what do we have to use angular velocity so this is not a new formula my dear friend it's exactly the same formula exactly the same formula all right so when i say l vector is equal to i times of omega vector it is just that i am saying that angular momentum vector is equal to well angular mass which is nothing but moment of inertia times angular velocity all right so this is very simple this is just like linear momentum only what you have to add a term is angular 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 all right so angular momentum is equal to angular mass times angular velocity 